Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, and today I want to show you step by step this tutorial of poppies in a golden field of wheat. This is a beautiful sun sky painting. It's like a sunrise sunset kind of scene. We've got light coming out across the field and poppies out in the field. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to be able to paint this for yourself at home. To help me do this is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that you can see every technique, every tool, every color mix so you can create this for yourself. Now, you might have come here just because you love poppies and you love this guy and you thought, oh, I really want that on my wall. And I'm so glad to have you. You can absolutely do that. If you are here for the 30 day painting challenge, I want to give you a pat on the back. We are still going and you are doing amazing. You're going to love today's class. It is going to be worth it. You're going to be so pleased with yourself. I don't think there's anything else we can do, but get your paint, get your brushes and come back. We're going to paint this right now. So here we are back again. Uh, uh, if you've just come in to paint this wonderful landscape, you're going to love it. But if you are here for Acrylic April, I just want to say you are doing great. And it is fantastic that you are hanging in. You will get a good result. Um, today's wish or intention is that may your horizons be clear. Sometimes we're in a long involved painting program. Um, it, it can have little stages of like frustration and excitement. And I don't know where you are in yours. But just know that in the group, you have a lot of support that you can lean on any time of year. It doesn't even have to just be during April. Anytime you're doing the program, you just come in and you talk to everybody and they will get you through. How are you doing, John? Good. So John's been this through this with me for four years now. This is the fourth year. Mm -hmm. And he can tell you that you guys are totally capable of doing this as long as you're easy with yourself and you're kind. Now on the palette, the position you saw the materials for today's class uh, burnt sienna, thalo green, cad yellow medium, ultramarine blue, thalo blue. I do like to use these two for sky. Um, this is the tight knit yellow uh, in the Senele. It's the Naples yellow light. If you don't have this color, it's not going to stop you. Just pre mix up some white and cad yellow to a very light value. And where I'm using this, you use that. Quinacridone magenta, cad red medium, Mars black. That's Sounds good, thing. right? Yeah. That's a nice thing. Let's begin by dividing up our surface. Now I am going to use a T-square ruler. And that is because I do better <laughs> making straight lines with it. I want to be just a smidge. It's not totally at the halfway line, but it's, you know, just a smidge above it. Smidgy smidge. And I'm going to make a little line. And if that looks good to me. Everything maybe a little bit down from that because I want a little more sky. This is sort of a big sky piece. There we go. You measure uh, how far that went down? Yeah, we can. If I did it, okay, good. It wasn't quite uh, uh, halfway. It was just a little bit above halfway at about three and a half inches from the top, or I guess nine centimeters. Mm -hmm. If that is your metric measurement, I don't judge. I don't judge. If metric, if you want to. Most of the world do. Um, <laughs> that was a weird thing to say. The next thing is I want to kind of paint in the underpainting or the roughed in block of sky and uh, grass. I'm going to take uh, my number 16 uh, hog brush. It's about a half inch wide. I'm going to get it a little bit damp. And I'm going to go into the white first. And you've uh, seen me kind of do this. Actually, let me make sure I also miss this so that when we get up here, it kind of vanishes mm. into the ether. Ether. I want those intentions to go out there. I'm going back and forth and you can see from the slight sheen in my paint that I've got it wet. And the reason that I want my paint wet is so that when I come back to do this very light sky, um, I already have that sort of white beginning. I'm gonna take a little of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue together mixed kind of one to one. And I'm gonna begin just putting in that slight, oh, just a slight little bit of blue first runoff it's just tinting toning you know they're really beautiful together mixed half and half i really love the mix they just kind of take themselves to a great space i'm going to be a little deeper with the blue on the left hand side 
and then get lighter over here towards the right because that's where my light source is going to be. But this is just that first layer, so it's a very light layer. I'm going to rinse this out. And for sort of my dark beginning color here on the ground, I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow and mix some of my burnt sienna into it. And everything forward here, I'm going to do with that. Now it's not water, so the landscape doesn't have to be like perfect, perfect. But I am going to get a coat of this all the way down as well, just as a place to start. I'll come back with my interesting uh, triangle of flowers later on. I just want to get the white covered. This first layer can make a real difference in your landscapes because as you paint, not only does the paint stick to it better, but I'm brushing back and forth across the canvas. Uh, even that sticks to it better, what you'll find also is that there's a luminosity in the paint that holds. I'm rinsing out my brush thoroughly. I'm going to dry this and sip my coffee. When we come back, we'll do the next step. So we have our two values on the surface, and we're going to start putting in our sky. I'm going to go ahead and treat myself to my mop. Uh, this is a one inch mop. I'm going to get it mildly damp and once again, load it with the white as you do mildly damp. I don't want it too soaked because that would uh, create too much of a watercolor wash effect. And I'm going to come right here and very lightly brush that white. And you'll notice that the bristles of this brush will break apart and that kind of helps create that little striation into the sky. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak over to this yellow. Now, remember in the beginning, I said if you don't have this yellow, you're just going to pre-mix up your cad yellow in a bunch of white and use it in its place. It's a slightly different color, right? But it will approximate it enough where you guys will get a good result. And I'm just lightly brushing over the top. Can you see that light brush? Mm -hmm. Just light. Now, as I go over to the side, I can get a little of my quinacridone magenta into that. I'm definitely going to get some wine in there. I will kind of brush upwards a little bit. This is the sky bank starting to go up. Oh, yeah. I'm going to come over from the side over here, a little more yellow and a little more white. Some little cloud work coming in. I'll switch out brushes, but I like to start with this sort of light brush to begin with because it just gives me a, those nice cloud forms. Now I'm rinsing it out. Rinse, 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 rinse. And my paint isn't dry. And uh, therefore, I can kind of come along and soften all of this. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. That way, it's kind of softening into the sky. I might grab a little of my yellow here and my blue color and white, as you do. And make sure that this part of the sky has a bit of that kind of value in it as well in that corner. See where the blue's just got a little gold in it. It will go green if you have too much yellow in that mix. You really want more white and blue and the yellow is just a, a small factor. And if it does, you just come right back. Okay, and just go back in and fix it. And I'm just going to come across here. I'm adding a little motion to the sky, and I'm going to mist my palette. Um, sometimes, even on the wet palettes, I still mist with water just to keep the paint from becoming gummy or problematic. Mix of the ultramarine blue and the phthalo blue, and you'll notice that there's some directionality to my brush strokes which are beginning to help the sky kind of be seen. 
maybe in the last final corner, a little more phthalo blue. A light brushing. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to call that a step because this is foundational to what happens in the sky next. Oh wait, let me soften this if I still can. I'm not using any specialty medium. This is just the water and the paint in my regular studio environment. Okay, we'll come back. We'll start adding more clouds and more details. Um, I do think having it a little bit dry for the next part will help. So we'll start there. If we need to put wet paint back down for blending one into wet, we will. But I think for this next one, it will help for us to have it dry. So I wanna get some big drama into this big prairie sky. I'm gonna take a round. This one is a number 10 round hog brush. I'm gonna get a little bit damp and I'm gonna start putting in the clouds. The clouds are gonna be a mix of the ultramarine blue and the quinacridone magenta. And then if you wanna gray them, you just put a little bit of that color of the light Naples yellow in it. And what that does, because they're complements, it will lighten, I mean, it will gray or desaturate the purple into more of a gray. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna very lightly, barely touching the canvas. Notice it's connecting from the middle of the brush to the tip and I'm holding it kind of at an angle to the canvas. I'm creating some light wispies and just dusting this on. So it's creating that soft cloud shape that you get. Clouds have soft shapes. I'm just wiggling in here, I'm coming back, making interesting little contrasts. I need to get a little bit wet, I will, and then wipe off on the towel, come back. We know that our light source is over here. That will really help us find our cloud. Mm -hmm. Now I can come get a little more pink into this and white. I can even come here along this little edge. And we're going to dust up some purple into that pink we had earlier. Look at that. We let some of the pink show through. And we may even come put some back. So don't feel like, oh no, I'm taking away all my hard work. You're not. Mm -hmm. Your work is still there. Clouds have lots of what's going on in them. Lots of layers. And when you want to make these pretty little skies, right, you'll notice that again working that mid belly to toe. If I was doing a round blender, I'd be doing still a similar thing. Get a little more white. You know, talk about some lighter value of that going on. I'll come right there. I had that sort of yellow mix there earlier. So I'm creating a, a desaturated and lightened version of that shadowed cloud, right? Mm hmm so right here, it will be in that range. And that mix was a little bit of that tight knit yellow and a little of that quinacridone pink and a lot of white. And I'm just adding that and more white. That's how I'm finding these barely there close to the sunscape clouds. That's how we get that effect. In everything, it's important to pay attention to those little, little differences, those little moments in a painting where you're like, you know, the clouds were dark over here, but they're, mm -hmm. they're brighter and warmer over here. How do I get there? It can be hard to know. And 
here. Now, interestingly enough, there's a very dark set. Got a little my cloud sky mixture and also my quinacridone. And uh, let's get a little of our pad yellow into that. See how that grayed it totally? It was much more powerful than this. So it takes it away out of that purple a bit and into a very significant gray. It's a significant gray. Yeah, it feels gray to the eye, but it still feels like it's part of the sky because we are using the sort of mother mix, the sort of beginning mix that we put into everything. I think it's important sometimes to add little wispy bits. Because the sky certainly thinks it's important. Yeah. Little trailers that haven't quite figured out where they're going. Look at that already go. Does that not just go, what? The dawn on this. Mm hmm Smidge. Back into that gray. Look at that gray. That is a big prairie sky gray. And it definitely has a bit of a different feel than the first purple we put there. And I might even add it to the back of this somewhat. A couple places, some deep shadow of the cloud. Yeah. Oh, rinse your brush out. You're doing so well. Look at you go. It's going. Let's, I don't want to dry it, but let's call this a step so you can catch up to where we're at before we do the finishing touches on the sky because that can go a little bit fast. So I want you to be able to get here. So we're going to add some highlights and some punch to the sky, like uh, like there's some light catching the front of the clouds. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone and my uh, Naples yellow, or Titanate yellow. Titanate yellow is my favorite version of the color, but the light Naples yellow also, it does a really good job. Same color, really, essentially. And I'm going to get a bunch of white into that mix. I'm biased a little more yellow. And I'm going to come into these clouds and I'm going to start to talk about the forward facing bits that are maybe in the light. Now okay, we're done. Forward facing bits in the light. Looks pretty cool. Ah, it's a lot of fun to do. Really, honestly, it is. And we've got a couple of layers uh, into the warmth of it. You know, towards the back here, maybe these are a little more pink. I'm putting them in a little more pink. Maybe a little more pink there in the crux of that one. Moving forward. Looking for all those little moments, little cloud moment. You want to really try to have them be, you know, interesting shapes. It feels obvious when you say it, but sometimes when you're in it, it's Kind of hard to get the effect on, right? I'm wiggling my brush, I'm using the toe, and I'm trying very hard to camouflage the patterns. Right? 
is what I'm trying to do is camouflage the patterns. Now, as I'm going to rinse out, rinse out quite a lot. And I'm going to get a little of my Naples yellow over here and a lot of titanium white. Start putting some bright pops to some of these little clouds and their front little bellies. Just working that. I know I, sometimes I get a little quiet. I get a little introspective as I'm wiggling my brush around. It's really cool to watch. It's just very calm. Those little highlights come in. It's just like, ooh. I, I like pieces like this because even before I get the flowers in, there's al already so much going on. So much just happening. Even in that little light space around the sun. So much happening. You just paint clouds. We almost did 30 days of clouds. It would be so really close. easy to do that, wouldn't it? <laughs> it just would be so. It really would. 30 days of just skyscapes. Different types of skies. And they're so much fun to paint. There's just no end to how fun they are to paint. Went back into the pink, but a much lighter version. I'm sure some of that back here. Because the light, it reaches. Sometimes you want to help it reach a few things. Really just pretty to watch happen. It just is. And it's pretty to do. It's just it's just super nice to do. I feel like we're good. Let's look at it overhead. See if we have what looks like, oh, like when you just want to walk out there and and check mm -hmm. on everything and just be like, oh, let me, I'm going to just kind of blend that little spot right there. There you go. Happy with that. Sometimes you have a little touches. All right, let's call this a step. I feel like we nailed it. We got a sky going. I hope you feel like you got a sky going. And we'll start putting in some of this landscape that's just so inviting. So we have this great landscape. And the vanishing point for us really is really over here. So a lot of our field is going to kind of pull this way. And if you'll notice the clouds are pulling this way. So it's sort of interesting, even though our light focus is there. I'm going to take a bit of my cad red and my cad yellow. And try to go a little more yellow this time. You could just use yellow ochre if you didn't want to do all this mixing. That would be okay. And where it's far away from the sun, I think I'm going to bring it more into a brown. I might even... A little black into that. Still needs to be pretty light, but kind of the general direction. I'm going to come here and make sure that that's kind of a nice distance horizon. Now, my black and my yellow, believe it or not, make a pretty decent first level green. 
if you've been paying along, you will have seen that. We've done this a few times. We did this uh, kind of last year, too, where black and yellow made a great green. And then in, in florals, you use it a lot because it's such a nice neutral green. Mm. And I'm just sort of doing the implied lines. We're not going to do like what we do with um, uh, uh, lavender. It's not where okay. we're going to go. But it's there's some similar journey here. And we're still going to get into our phthalo green and that range of colors. I might rinse out a bit. Come back into my yellow and red and just get it with some white into it. See how it's just very light here? Yeah. And then adding more color as I move out. And that's sort of that first thoughts about how we're going to rough that in. And then one nice thing that we can do is we can come in. My brush is super dirty and I'm going to get a little of my burnt sienna and my green. I might even come get my cad red into it. Make it quite, quite desaturated. And come along this little edge here in the corner and I'm going to tap, tap a distant little dark line. Mm -hmm. Bring it a little bit back that way. Some plants that are having a moment. They have moments. Moments. Little corners. I'm just letting the messiness of the brush help me create those little distant details. As I come over, I'm going to actually add a little bit of yellow into this dark mix. I'm still putting in here, but as we get near the sun, It's just a little, a little more yellowed out. Maybe get a little white into it even. Hmm. As you can see it, it exists out there, but it's just not the same darkness that it is over here. All right. That was a bit of just sort of landscape concept. <laughs> Take that in. Think about that. So what do we learn? We learn over here in our light source, things are going to go warmer. We're going to be adding more yellows and oranges and whites into that. As they come over here, we're going to desaturate at contrasting colors. Uh, that's colors there on the opposite end of the color wheel and kind of knock those colors back. And so then eventually we're going to do a big, ridiculous drama through here. It comes across our lightscape because we can, because we're artists. But this is how we're setting up that moment. So I'm going to want to come through here and add some of the texture and some of the landscape and create that distance and closeness of where things are more in focus, where things are out of focus. I'm going to keep going with my hog brush for a minute to do this. Over here on this far left, I'm going to make another little dark color. This is actually kind of Maybe distant growth, but I want to make sure that it's light because it's in the field, you know? It's in the field. Just out there in the field. I'm just tapping back and forth. Adding a little white and yellow. 
And you see there's this kind of this sort of texture. And that is, you know, we don't want to overdo it, but it is a reality of what we've got going on. I'll come back with a little of my brown. Make sure my brush is not too wet. I can even on occasion get into my green. And add some greenery to that. These are subtle things in the distance. They will not be subtle up close, but in the distance, they are subtle. I'm gonna get a little of my red into that green and brown mix. They have a cumulative effect. Mm -hmm. Add a little bit of that out there. This is very desaturated. A little bit of it there. I might come and get a little more red into it, but it's, I should have wheeled that back and forth. Now I am going to change significantly this color space here, but I want to kind of put it in. Notice I'm just tapping my brush up and down and making that little line. Let's get that overhead so you get a sense of where that's going. It's coming over here from the right and moving over here towards our vanishing point. There's a bit of an arc in it. And we're just tapping that up and down. I'm mixing my red into my brown and green and I'm doing that to desaturate it. Contrasting colors. It'll help things appear further away. You know, and then I can even get a little more green into that, right? And it desaturates the green as well. Oh, yeah. So they're helping each other. They're so helpful. If you don't know how to do this in a controlled way, though, what can happen is that your color can lose its uh, vibrancy in a painting. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes people mix into contrasting colors, not understanding what they're doing. And then finding that they've undermined the work that they're trying to do. Gotcha. Now I'm going to get into my brown here. I'm going to add a little of my yellow like you do and a little bit of my red and some white. Start putting in a little more of this wheat grass. Wheat thins. <laughs> Joke in my house. <sighs> then keep coming down here. Now notice that there's a row of yellow and a row of brown, and that's creating that little bit of unexpected brown. Sometimes mm -hmm. that's lovely in a painting, but sometimes you need an evenly mixed color. And this is one of those times we do. So I have to go back in and kind of fix that a bit. we don't want a line of bright saturation just like at all we can put in a little deeper brown like here and there just to say that there's depth in the grass on the hills that are coming out Getting a little more color and character in the distance. Got a lot happening here that I don't really need to get into at this moment. I'm going to add a bunch of this cad yellow and a ton more white. Cad yellow is so nice. Yes, and I'm going to come over here. Even more cad yellow and more white.
And if I need to, I can get into that paint it yellow here. A little darker as I come back. And I'm, I'm turning my canvas slightly towards me just to help me be able to affect my, my brush stroke better. Look at that come in. Like, look how fast we're getting our little landscape in. A little desaturated red through there. A couple places. All right, let's call that a step. And when we come back, we'll continue on with our landscape. I want you just to get this far and then we're going to keep going. That was a lot to take in. So get to here and then I'll show you what you're going to do next. So I've got a depth of color up front and I'll go ahead and take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green. And I'm going to make little up and down strokes for here. Kind of a regular over to the left side, but that's, you know, where I'm going to want to break up into that. Going forward a bit. It's deep. If you are using very inexpensive paint, sometimes these layering techniques are very challenging. And you have to do workarounds like painting white underneath or painting a color lighter if your colors are not able to cover well. So if you're having that as an issue, you know, come in and get some tips. Because that's not wholly unexpected with inexpensive paints. There we go. So that's first sort of like dark greenery kind of in there yeah that's going to be under the poppies as they go as they come through i can just lightly touch a little bit here and there it's just a touch you know you don't want a lot Always go back if I have a little too much, and that's a little too much. I'm going to wet my brush. Kind of remove a bit, and then that's a perfect amount. So sometimes you have to do a subtractive layer. It's not unre unreasonable or unexpected. I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow into my earlier wheat mix. And come here and... I want to make sure it's evenly mixed. I don't want to get into that difficulty where I'm going to make a little bit of light coming down this part of the dry field. This is going to be our big drama story. little cad yellow and the red into there so that it's much more orange I 
just gonna pop some orange here on top here too. See that little bit of orange? I'm gonna dust it all the way to the light source. Irregularly, lightly. Treat it like a chili pepper. Ah, just touch, touch, touch. Come back in with another depth of burnt sienna and phthalo green. And you'll notice that the second layer, the first layer underneath has dried in this amount of time. And that lets the second layer just have depth, 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 depth. When you have strong light, it's important to create that deep shadow to build up on. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this comes around my edge here for framing later. Now, we're going to want to change water and we're going to want to dry our canvas for the next part. So let's dry it. And you want to make sure you've got your little run of light coming up to where the light is. We may exaggerate that some more, but you want the beginnings of that. Your depth here and a nice arrangement of distant fields that have gone dry. So let's dry it with a hairdryer and come back and we'll continue to paint on it. So this is nice and dry. I'm going to pick up my uh, hog again. If your hog gives you trouble to switch to your round or the corner of your braid, that would be also fine. And I'm going to begin to put in um, my poppies. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of my quinacridone and my cad red together and surprisingly enough sometimes I'll mix in for the deep shadow of it a little ultramarine blue and I'm going to come here and just tap this dark distant poppy over the desaturated poppy. These are small little touches. Notice how small those flowers are. They're not big. Mm -hmm. I can't really see the individuals there. Far away. Nothing back and forth. This is going to go quick, guys. Quicker I than you think. It. Yeah. You're just in that brush. Yeah, you just get in that brush. Now, as we move over towards the right hand side, we'll get a little more red into our mix. And that's because this is more in that sunlight. I'm just touching my brush and I'm just letting it make little messy light. One of the nice things about a hog is because it doesn't make a crisp line. It makes sort of a fuzzy line. It's, it already sort of lends itself into out of focus. Crisp shapes tend to appear in focus to our eye and slightly out of focus shapes are like where they're kept a little bit irregular. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow into this really nice sunset this is a really nice sunset yeah no we want to be here i want to be here right now it's where i want to be just a little bit of that color happening there kind of coming forward See these shapes are, they're a little more distinct. Some of them are clustered together so they appear big. That'll be like a grouping of them and then there's got to be little individuals, tiny ones, saying, oh, I'm, an, I'm alone, Poppy.
Yeah. I'm going to rinse out real quick while this is all having a dry. Wipe this brush out. And come over here. My burnt sienna and phthalo green and a ton of cad yellow. I'm going to add some of the highlights of the green here. See that starting to pop in there? That'll help us see like, it's just little flicks and it's dry brushed. So what's underneath really still shows through. We're just capturing a little bit. little pops of stems and things that would have seen a little bit of light and then through here a lot more yellow imagine that there's a cone coming out here from this like the way water goes across the waves. A little white into it. Doesn't have to be a lot, but we just want to make sure that the greens, we're going to really hit the lights with the poppies, but we want to make sure the greens have the lights as well. That's what's going to help us go, oh, that's in the light. It's like glittering across it. Already you kind of get that sense that there's light. Oh, yeah, you really do. Okay. Rinse out. Dry, dry, dry. And come back and we'll continue on. Putting flowers in the field. Oh, I can almost smell the fresh air. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. It feels pretty good. I really am liking this. I like it. Too. The reason I dry this is that the green will really desaturate the red, and I want to control how the red is saturated and unsaturated and with what. I will be using my cad red and a little bit of twin magenta, and where needed, I will still be getting into the ultramarine blue to make those shadows. And the reason we'll have shadows here, even in this field, as I make these little weird poppy shapes. Look at me. They're like little messy bits. Don't underestimate the messy bits. Messy bits. The reason that they have to be messy is that they have very delicate petals. And they really face a lot of different directions in the field. Um, my first trip... No, I guess my second trip to France with my mom uh, for painting, we went looking for poppy fields, which I've mentioned before. And you've got to find um, a farmer that hasn't treated because they treat poppies like weeds. They're weeds. So you've one got to find fields that the farmer is like letting rest or he just yep. isn't messing with at that moment. And so that you've got that. That's and so I, pretty. I would sit in in the flowers and take pictures out across the heads and it just really became enamored of them. As you get up closer to yourself up here, the heads will be bigger. Yeah, that makes sense for this uh, scaling perspective. Yeah. And, no. and what's the other one? Atmospheric perspective. So there's um, the size relationship, the scale of something. To let you know where it is in the plane. So there's atmospheric perspective. 
and that would include scale and desaturation and if things are in focus or diffused. And then linear perspective is the way that this field sort of is implied by the lines that are vanishing over here. So we got a little bit of both in there. Woohoo! Go us! <laughs> go, go! I love the sunlight though. It's the, it's the, the, the what they say, the bomb diggity! The bomb diggity! I think it's important to make sure that you have big and small. You don't want just even red bloops. And not all your red bloops will be bright because some will be deep down in the grass and won't show very well. Yeah, I know. It's fun stuff. You want to like really put them in there they they they, they cluster they do the stuff it's super fun rinse out rinsey rinsey rinse rinse and we start to come with the joy let's just grab some cad red tint it with just a smidge man be careful with it just a smidge of quin magenta and start to touch some of the flowers, especially those that are more sun facing. Now how this will work is it is improved by not just what you touch, but what you don't touch. So you don't want to, you don't want to light everything. Yeah, that's the, the dream, right? How much do I light? And I'm not even in, this is just the cab light. Now, this does work better with real cadmium pigment, and uh, what I'll say is with cadmium pigments or any professional pigments, always read the paint tube label. This doesn't belong in your body for any reason, and, you know, you want to let it dry before disposing of it and do proper disposal just in general. So, uh, all the EPA studies so far have said artists are not a significant source of problem. In this way that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be you know thoughtful in how we solve those problems you can always use hue or pyrrole or another one of the more saturated natural red so there's options out there Just go in. It's important that I make sure that, you know, I'm irregular in my patterns. That's what you see me doing. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow over here to my red. Your cad yellow, your cad red. Let's touch the tops with this bright orange as well so that we can see the light come across the poppies. So we've got to, we've got to do more than just the red because we want to get the light to come across this little grouping of them. So much more. I like that, that orangey highlight. And it's just going to come across here. Just to say that there's this little little thing little bit of light now also i'm going to come here and get a little bit of my bright orange just kind of talk about that light coming down the, the wheat as well the wheat <laughs> So 
Just a little bit of it. Can you kind of see that little implication? Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Rinse out. Get a little bit of just pure yellow and white. Now I want to make sure I don't have a lot of water on my brush. Adding a little bit of zhuzh. That's the cad yellow and a little white just on the toe. Little sparkles, maybe kind of the little sparkles, super sparkles. Be 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 careful with that move, be very careful with that move. I'm gonna make a nice orange. Just a little bit, just dancing across the tops of them. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Get a little bit of cat red. Mm. Just pure. Make sure it looks like, what? I'm going to be like, I don't know. I feel like we nailed it. I think so. All right. Let's look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's like, who wouldn't want to go here? It's, it's just, it's so inviting. It's, mm -hmm. And it just takes you places. You come in, you go up, you come down. Right, because you've got a little circle of light that keeps you in the canvas. Little trick. I'm going to get my brush and uh, get a little bright green, I think. Can't not love that. Can't not love that. Mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Let me come back and tell you what you're going to do next. Well, we did it. Did you not love that? That was a lot in one class. We covered so many landscape lessons and how to paint flowers. You know, working up close and working at a distance with flowers really helps you understand their nature. I'm so glad. If you came here for just this painting, Thank you for joining me. I'd love to see your version online. Share with me on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or Pinterest or any of the places you would share art. I am on all those places always looking. I'd love to see your versions. If you are here for Acrylic April, please share today's lesson in group. 
If you're feeling tired, I want you to know that those ebbs and flows are very natural and the elation of completion is completely worth it. You know, remember to, to keep pace and to not put so much pressure on yourself that you suck the joy out of the program. This is a 30 day painting challenge. Um, I'm not going to come into your house and take your paints away if you have life happen to you and you have to make it a 60 day painting challenge. That's okay. It's okay. Yeah. It is okay. Every year you just put in what is the right amount for you to put in. You will get skills. You will have growth. It will be transformative. So I always like to remind everybody <laughs> every year as we get on into the program, like, it's okay. Take a breath. You're doing good. Now, I hope I'm going to see you for tomorrow's lesson. I want you to be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.